Shalom and welcome to the adventures of YHWHY, coming to you from the couch. And we're looking back at the book of Sirach, which we just posted. And this is from a book from James uh, Vanderkam and Peter Flint, and is titled The Meaning of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And uh, on page 162, it says from the Septuagint Apocrypha, passages in Sirach, and there are many different fragments from the book of Sirach in the Qumran caves. Uh, the note states, among the Apocrypha is the Wisdom Book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, or the Wisdom of Yasha ben Sirah, which was written in Hebrew about 190 or 180 BCE, uh, according to chapter 8. Several passages furnish evidence about which books were considered by Ben Sira as authoritative, authoritative in his day. One of these describes the activity of the scribe. How different the one who devotes himself to the study of the Torah of the Most High. He seeks out wisdom of all the ancients and is concerned with prophecy and preserved the sayings of the famous and penetrates their subtleties of parables. He seeks out the hidden meanings of Proverbs and is at home with the obscurity of parables. And that is from Sirach chapter 38, 34, and uh, through 39, verse 3. Uh, it further states, it has been proposed that this message points to a tr tripartite structure of the canon or even to the sequence of laws, wisdom, writings, and Nabi, the prophets, as found in Greek and Latin Bibles. Uh, these suggest seem speculative by going beyond the evidence, but the passage shows that for our author, the law of the Most High, the wisdom of all the ancients, prophecies and sayings, parables and proverbs were very authoritative. More significant is the famous poem in praise of famous men from biblical times in chapter 44 through 50. The order in which Ben Sirah praised Israel's ancestors reveals the source he drew upon and the sequence in which he found them. Our author refers to events in the five books of Moshe, Yehoshua, Sh Sh Shev Sh Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, with some p parallel material from Chronicles and Isaiah, with Jeremiah, Ezekiel, possibly Job, the twelve prophets, Esra and Nehemiah. If Chronicles and Job are removed from this list, it corresponds with the order of books in the first two divisions of the Hebrew Torah and the prophets. Virtually all the books in the third division, the writings, are absent. Psalms, possibly Job, Proverbs, Ruth, the Song of Shlomo, Songs, Ecclesiastes, Lamentation, Esther, Daniel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Half a century later, in about 132 BCE, the author's grandson translated Ben Sirach's book into 
the Greek, adding a prologue of his own. This prologue mentions three series or divisions of the books that are apparently considered scripture by himself and his audience. It states, quote, Many great teachings have been given to us through the Torah, the law, and the Nabi, the prophets, the others that followed them. And for these we should praise Israel for instruction and wisdom. Now, those who read the scriptures must not only themselves understand them, but must also, as lovers of learning, be able through the spoken and written word to help the outsider. So my grandfather, Yahshua, who had devoted himself especially to the reading of the law and the prophets and the other books of our ancestors, and had acquired considerable proficiency in them, was himself also led to write something pertaining to instruction and wisdom, so that by becoming familiar also with his book, those who love learning might make ever greater progress in living according to the Torah. You are invited, therefore, to read it with goodwill and attention, and to be indulgent in cases where, despite our diligent labor in translating, we may seem to have rendered some phrases imperfectly, for what was originally expressed in Hebrew does not have exactly the same sense when translated into another language. Not only this book, but even the Torah, the law itself, the prophecies, and the rest of the books differ not a little when read in the original. The passage points to the Torah, the law, and to the Nabi, the prophets, or the prophecies, as scripture, together with an apparent third series, the others that followed them, the other books of our ancestors, or the rest of the books. It has been suggested that from the author's grandson, and even from Ben Sirah himself, the writings already formed a closed collection. The evidence, however, does not support such a proposal. A third series of old books is very vaguely defined and was possibly not as authoritative as the translators as the other two. It sounds like the author of the meaning of the Dead Sea Scrolls puts his opinion into the last few sentences there. And from here, this author goes into the book of Maccabees. I thought it was quite interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, send this out. Subscribe it. Hit the notify dinghy bell. And uh, have a day full of shalom.